My name is William. I co-founded a tech company, internet company from Indonesia named Tokopedia. So I consider myself as an entrepreneur by necessity, entrepreneur by accident. So this is my story. I was born in a small hometown in Sumatra Island. Indonesia is an archipelago country, 17,000 island. When I graduated from high school, my late father and my uncle want me to have a better chance of life. So they believe that better chance of life start with a better education. So they give me an opportunity to go to university. So for the first time, I'm leaving my home uh, town to a boat for four days and three nights. Arrive in capital city of Indonesia, Jakarta. And I studied computer science. But on my second year, my late father start to falling ill. In order to stay in the university, I tried to find a job. And my first job is to become internet cafe operator on the night shift from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. every day. And that's become blessing in disguise because this is year 1999 when internet is still a luxury product in my country. So that's the moment I have the idea to build Tokopedia because I see the inequality of opportunity. People in a small town, they don't have access, a local maker don't have access like people in a big town. Their market is very limited. And also there's a trust between people that already connected through online, but they don't trust each other to do online transaction. And I see that internet or marketplace model like Alibaba in China, eBay in US solve this problem. And I want to start the first online marketplace from Indonesia. But the problem is I don't have any capital to start. 10 years ago, not the right year to start business because my father get cancer, cancer and I'm the only worker in my family. So I try to raise money, inspired by this Google founder, Facebook founder, is a young entrepreneur that can start their business because they're able to uh, raise money. I try to pitch to all local REITs that I know. But it took me two years, 2007, eight and nine. Every time I pitch about the idea, no one believe about the idea. Because at that time, people will ask me five questions. The first questions they will ask, William, can you tell me one person in Indonesia that being successful or wealthy because they're doing internet business? I cannot name one. There's no role model. The second, they are afraid about the competition. They said that you are just want to beat eBay of Indonesia or Alibaba of Indonesia. If you prove to the world that Indonesia need marketplace, everyone will come. And how can you compete with them? They have a better capital. They have a better know-how. They have a better uh, technology. So fear of global competition. The industry do not have the track record. And then they will ask me my personal background as well. Which family that you come from? I come from humble family. Which university that you graduated from? I consider myself graduated from Internet Cafe. I never, went, I never went overseas. I never went abroad. I didn't speak English until 2010. And then they also ask, what is your entrepreneurship background? I never start any business before. I just work for internet cafe and then work for a couple of like uh, local uh, company. So I, I even not raised in an inter entrepreneur uh, family. My father is also just a, another worker, right? So there's no track record of my uh, personal background as well. And then one moment that changed my life is when these potential investors say to me, William, you only have your youth once in your life, so don't waste it. Don't daydreaming. Your role model is all come from Silicon Valley. They are all special person. They are born special. You are not. So find something more useful. And then that is the moment that I find a purpose of my life. Because the reasons I want to start my company is to solve trust issue. But when I want to start my business, I realize that it's all about trust. And unfortunately, trust in emerging market or perhaps anywhere in the world is measured by a track record, measured by your past history, not by your future vision. My startup dream, I learned about how to fight as an underdog. And at fight as an underdog, you need to have a three things. The first things that I learned is having a corex. That is the moment that I have a corex to believe that past is something that we can no longer change. But future, we can still shape our own future. I have a corex to believe that this learning that I go through is actually become the purpose of my life. If I can build a marketplace like Tokopedia, then I can help a lot of people and I can help the next generation to believe and to 
to have a platform to start and grow their business online. So I start with the Codex. And then of course, um, the second thing that I learned is about perseverance. I didn't speak English until 2010, but in 2010, there's a first momentum in Indonesia tech startup. Yahoo acquiring a small startup in Indonesia. And then for the first time, Indonesia is in tech crunch, a US-based uh, tech uh, uh, news. And then after that, a lot of venture capital comes to Indonesia, uh, private equity and all comes to Indonesia. And I had opportunity to meet with them. I'm so excited. But for the first 10 minutes, I try to pitch about my idea. They start to say that, William, we don't understand you. You waste our time. Because I didn't, I, I understand English by reading and listening. But I have a difficult time to have a conversation in English. Today, I still speak broken English. Imagine 10 years ago. It's like very, very terrible. But I learned that I didn't have a choice. I need to have a global a view because Indonesia is just emerging market. And all the competition comes already. Only six months after we launched our product, eBay enters the market. And then one year after that, Rakuten entered the market. So all the global giants, when you're building a tech company, since day one, you need to be ready to compete with global players. So I know that I need to have a global exposure. So that's where I learned about the perseverance. I'm, I, I'm lucky enough to meet with Japanese investor. They have a history to invest in Indonesia market, and their English is also not very good. So they have a better empathy to my English, right? So they give me opportunity. Uh, another story about perseverance, for example. The first things that I did after I start my business is goes to my university because I believe that starting a tech company is all about a people. I try to hiring people there. I stand two days like, like this. I stand two days to convince a, a young college student to join my company. No one apply because no one believe that Indonesia or emerging company can build a technology company that can compete globally. And I'm a very introvert and shy person. So imagine, it's a hurt me so much, but I learned that it's a, if I don't share my dream, then no one will trust me and will join me. So I start to uh, take opportunity like this, speak in like small forum and so on and so on. And turn out today we already employ 1,300 people. Like, so it starts from a small uh, idea, a small journey, a lot of failure, but eventually with a corex, with a perseverance, we can make it. So why I can have that corex and perseverance is because of hope. When that moment when I heard about this advice, William, don't waste your youth. You only live uh, once, don't daydreaming. I actually remind about the founding father of our country that take our country to be independent. Insignior Sukarno. He once said in the public that we need to dream very, very high. So the word is, Bermimpilah setinggi langit jika engkau jatuh, engkau akan jatuh di antara bintang-bintang. To dream as high as a sky, if you fall, you will fall amongst a star. So to dream as high as a sky, if you fall, you will fall amongst the star. So it's very sad for me when our country is founded by this visionary president that encourages everyone to dream as high as the sky, but we have our independence not um, only like 70 years, today 72 years. We already, as a generation, forget to dream high. We already encourage the youth to not dreaming, to stop daydreaming, right? So that's a bit about my story. I want to share um, this session together. So if you have any questions about the startup dream, or you, if you can share any things about your startup dream, I'm happy to have that conversation. Thank you very much. India, there is a resource of technology people because all they went to America, they come back. Versus Indonesia, many of the uh, highly educated people go back to their family business. So you don't have, a, he says Indonesia, they don't have a resources for the venture business. What do you think about it? So it's a very true, but um, I think that we need to always change that situation, right? So like um, my original point, we can, not, we can no longer change the past, but we can change the future. So I give example. First time when we want to start our company, I stand two days, no one want to join us. But last year, during summer uh, holiday, then there's a message from two students from Harvard University. 
So this is Indonesian. William, can we have summer internship at your company? So they are no longer joint investment banker or like a consultant firm. They are go back to Indonesia to join a tech company because they believe that this can have a big impact. And surprisingly, after taking that summer internship, one of them actually don't want to go back to school. They don't want to continue finish the MBA. But I have a big problem to convince their parents. His mom and his dad don't want that idea. His uh, son dropped out of the school just to join the startup, right? So I think the situations can always be changed. Like um, today, Tokopedia, our firm, is already have more than 1.5 million small business owners to start and grow their business online. So the entrepreneurship uh, spirit is actually there. And today, uh, the company is already a multi-billion dollar company, something that we don't think of, something that I never imagined at the early days of the company. But I always believe that past we can no longer change, but whatever the situations, we can hope for a better future. So you mentioned uh, the, the point that there's a lot of international competition which eventually comes into the country, right? So how do you stay ahead of them, given they have all these, I guess, multinational resources, better technology in some cases? So how do you stay ahead of them and compete effectively? I always believe that this generation, the internet generation, is the luckiest generation ever. Because internet generation is the generation of underdog, the era of underdog. In the era of underdog, it's about challenging the status quo against all the odds, somehow survive and eventually win. If we see that in US, Google, they are not the first search engine in the world, but they are challenging the status quo. Or another example, Alibaba in China, they need to face the global competition like eBay, but they managed to become the biggest uh, e-commerce company in China as well. At the early days, all the giants, for them, they are only treat Indonesia as expansion market. So they don't really localize the product to the local needs. While for us, this is only our market. So we really focus at that. And the talent is so, so limited, the talent, right? So, you need to always, you cannot find a talent that understands that. You need to nurture that. And that's because I born in there, I raised in there, I know what is the customer pain point. Actually, Jack Ma is a one of my idol. And today he's become my biggest competition in the market. So he once said like this in, in China market, he said that eBay is like shark in the ocean. Alibaba is like crocodile in the river. And when shark and crocodile fight in the ocean, shark will win. But if Sa fight with the crocodile in the Yangtze River, then crocodile should win. This is about the local wisdom, right? When they acquire a, a, a rocket internet company, become our competition two years ago, I tell to all my teams, we need to be Komodo in the island. Because Indonesia has 17,000 island. All the river is already have a crocodile. All the oceans is already have the globalization Sa. But we, as a local entrepreneur and as a local people, we should be the Komodo in the island, right? So if uh, Sa and the uh, uh, crocodile goes to the island, Komodo should fight and Komodo should win. So like that. So if there's no other questions, perhaps I can share another story. So yeah, so perhaps I'll share a story about Tokopedia is actually the first internet company in Southeast Asia that raised $100 million from SoftBank and Sequoia Capital. In end of September 2014, the company that I lead only have three months runway left. And that's the competition is so fierce at that time. And then my wife, at that time still my girlfriend, she asked me to uh, go for holiday. She studied medicine seven years. Uh, finally, she graduated. And I start my company almost seven years. And she said that, William, we both work so hard. Now, I'm graduated, let's go for holiday. I want to go to Japan. And I said that, oh, I cannot. My company will die if I cannot, I cannot close around in the next uh, three months. But after that, I think that I'm very uh, selfish. So I actually planned for a secret trip to follow her to Japan. So she decided to go holiday by herself. But then I decided that I need to follow her. So then, but secretly, because I want to propose to her. But surprisingly, on the end of the September, I get a phone call from uh, SoftBank. And they say that, William, can you fly to meet with our chairman? 
Mr. Masayoshi Son in 2nd of October. From Indonesia, I need visa to go to Tokyo. But because of I already have a plan for secret proposal, I have the visa, right? So I'm very lucky person. So I say, yes, I can go to Tokyo, right? So, and then on the last day of that, before I fly to Tokyo, my uh, early shareholder, Sato-san, called me. He said that, William, Sequoia partner is in the town. Can you meet with them? And I said that, of course I can. So this is 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. I spend a time with them and then just uh, tell about the company and so on. By 7 p.m., I'm on the car, go to the airport. And then I got another call from Sequoia Capital. And then uh, they asked, William, can you meet with us tomorrow? I say that, no, I cannot. I am on the way to airport. And they ask, where do you go to? I say that I am flying to Osaka to tonight. Surprisingly, when I arrived at Osaka, I met with their partner already waiting in the Osaka. So it uh, really surprised me. And then they chat with me until 5 p.m. And then I say that, sorry, I really need to go. I'm here to about to propose to uh, uh, a girl, right? So, and then at that night, I proposed to my, I, I figured out where my uh, uh, girlfriend is and I proposed. Luckily, she say yes. After she's so happy, I say that, sorry, I need to fly to Tokyo. <laughs> Because it's Osaka, right? And then I fly to Tokyo. And then the day after that, I met with Masayoshi Son. And after one hour meeting, he decided to invest in the company. So actually, in uh, some Japanese article, they say that there's a week of three proposal. And luckily, everyone say yes. So sometimes life is like that, right? So it's a lot of serendipity. It's a lot of uh, luck play a part of that. You cannot really design that. But if you work hard, if you have this courage, have this perseverance, and never lose hope, I always believe that the doors will suddenly open for you. What do you think are the obstacles for budding entrepreneurs that are specific to Southeast Asia? You know, like what are, what, what are the challenges that are unique to this region, you know, for people who maybe, you know, don't have as much luck? I think a lot is a mindset. The obstacle is a mindset and uh, from, from within is a mindset and from the environment is a, at first, like 10 years ago, is a access to the capital. But today we can see in Southeast Asia alone, there's a seven uh, company, uh, value more than a billion dollar company, a tech company, right? One in Vietnam, three in uh, Indonesia, three in Singapore. So access to capital is no longer an issue, but uh, talent is still an issue, right? So this is no Silicon Valley. You cannot just hire a good quality engineer from the ground. But this challenge, this obstacle, is an obstacle for everyone. So if you can solve this faster and better, not just the mindset, how to finance an underdog. So the culture of our company is really the culture of underdog. We will always, always have lack of resources, always, always have lack of talent, but we cannot wait until we have the resources. We cannot wait until we have the talent to start fight with the global giants, right? So you need to figure out what is your uh, strength in this uh, uh, limited uh, exposure or limited talent, it's about understanding the consumer. In the end, when we build a product, it's always about the quality of services or the quality of product. Will customer enjoy it? Will customer love it? So we really focus on that. So obstacle will always be there, but I always believe there's a, uh, that's actually opportunity, not an, not an uh, uh, obstacle. Imagine, like for us, we are living 24 seven in Indonesia. For us to identify the problem, to identify this obstacle, to lift that obstacle on a daily basis will be easier for us to solve that problem. Imagine if the headquarter is uh, somewhere in the California or somewhere in uh, uh, Beijing. It is very difficult to really understand that obstacle and relate to that obstacle and figure out the solution of that.